by taking advantage of the data like any entity so does. So that's illegal. That's not what they do. They, so front running is what you're describing. The way that they make profit is because, so I don't think you know exactly what a market maker does. So I'll explain again. Market makers make money by tightening spreads. When they take positions on either end of a trade, the money that they're making is by being on either end of that trade and then tightening the spread between the bids and the asks, right? Or the bids and the offers. The, the, the reason why they'll do payment for order flow is because the more trades they get, the more they can make money off of that spread. That's why they do payment for order flow. They don't do it to front run. They don't need to front run to make money off of it. They just do it Destiny, by executing like billions of trades. Destiny, the stock market is a very big, complex thing. Hey, can you hear me? Mr. Raynat, I can hear you loud and clear. How are you, Destiny? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <sighs> Playing Hearthstone. So it could be better, but could not be too better. bad. Could be worse. Well, uh, how's life going? How's your the bazaar and everything? Feeling okay about everything? Oh yeah, I'm feeling very good about it. It's coming out later this year, and it's finally like the pieces are coming together. It's starting to look like a real thing. So that's gotcha. been an exciting process. But yeah, I want to talk about this GameStop thing. Uh, I used some like strongly worded language, which we uh, all do. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not but um, it. this is like 100% happening, and. It's, it's unquestionably happening, and I want to send you just some, like, just stuff from the SEC. And people have, like, tried talking about this problem. If you want to, like, read it on your own time later, feel free. But, Wait, yeah, um, just real quick. When you say this is happening, what are we referring to? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what your chat said my, my whole point was, but here's, like, my thesis when I talked about it a couple days ago. Basically, naked shorting is happening. It's rampant. It's bad for society, and it should stop. And that was like my thesis. And it is related to GameStop. GameStop is like the symptom of it. But um, yeah. And then I read through your paper and like uh, you did point out a lot of like common misconceptions from uh, Rocket Riders, which uh, I agree with that stuff too. But like just because a few people in the crowd are stupid doesn't mean that like the whole issue is not happening. So that was kind of my feelings on it. What, um, yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, I, I don't know about like the broader market because I haven't read on every single security that gets traded or whatever. Um, when we say like naked shorting, why do we think that's happening again? Uh, well, there's uh, plenty of emails from Goldman Sachs uh, that says it's rampant. It's been something the SEC has talked about. They've put reg show into effect to try to clamp down on it and the people within the SEC uh, at the time said that it wouldn't be enough and it wouldn't actually get in the way of the issue at all. Or like, um, we're, I guess more specifically Brothers. in regards to like, um, I'm not talking like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. I mean like right now with the GME stuff, why do we think that naked shorting is a thing that's happened? Um, high failure to deliver rates, uh, the stock price tanking 200 points in 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> the uh it's 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 a market-wide problem it's not just gamestop but well sure but we're talking so specifically about gamestop because a couple of those things you mentioned were specific to gamestop right so the failure to deliveries were pretty high on some of the days but i mean they all settled in a few days right it had more recorded failed to delivers in january than like every other stock in the market combined i think it's yeah but there was also unprecedented coordinated retail movement against the stock as well in a way that has never been seen in the history of the stock market, right? right. <clears throat> sure. Why does that mean that like a high percentage of the stock just fails to deliver in an electronic system? So they generally delay and they what? take advantage of it. Why wouldn't they? Wait, why what? There's a, we're on like a, you know, T plus three system, like they just taking advantage of the settlement delay in order to make more money. There's no reason they wouldn't. There's no oversight. They have the means motive. So there's lots of oversight, right? FINRA and the SEC no have oversight over the, there, there is oversight. No, they do nothing. They're useless. They've never done anything. They, they're, they it's have, a, it's a they, regulatory body. They, they, they dole out. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, let's do, let's do one at a time. Okay. Before we pile it all on. Okay. So the, the failed delivers were very high, but if you chart those out, because there's a website that tried to do it, but they buried this behind one or two graphs. If you chart out the failure to delivers and you map it onto the uh, volume of the day, you see that it was like pretty closely correlated. So on the highest volume days, 
you had the highest amount of fail to deliveries, but most of these settled within like a day or two. Like it wasn't like there was this rampant, massive amount of filter deliveries. When we talk about how there was more here than in any other, than the entire rest of the market combined, that might, that, that's probably true, but like there was unprecedented, coordinated retail movement on this particular security in a way that's never been seen in the history of the entire stock market. Well, why does that suddenly mean that like failure to deliveries are not an issue and that they can't happen? A lot of people bought GameStop and therefore failed to deliveries never happened. I don't know. So I think the problem is that because of the way that our market is structured, because of the way the brokerages work, and because of the assumptions made about retail traders, I think that retail traders are genuinely seen, and the market is kind of structured around retail traders being relatively unsavvy investors. You don't expect to see like a huge coordinated movement of retail traders in a particular direction. And I think that part of the way the markets are built kind of operate on the idea that retail traders are pretty equal on like the buy and sell of most sides of things. But when you just see hugely coordinated movements with unprecedented amounts of money in, in this type of fashion, it's just something we've never seen in the markets, but we're not really ready for this type of movement. Like, okay, so because there's a big movement of people, uh, electronic systems will fail more often. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so it's not about electronic systems. The problem is the deposit and collateral requirements that exist on the side of brokerages that are executing these trades. So you correctly pointed out, well, that, you said- Why would that change the fail to deliver rate, the fact that they have to put up money? The, yeah. Because I, I think that when you get this like collection of, of retail traders moving on one side of a trade, I think that what you end up having is a lot of difficulty for um, whether it's brokerages or whether it's the people downstream of them trying to like secure all of those trades. Like you might run into like one or two days of additional settlement time because of like this type, this amount of activity around such a volatile stock. I, like all, all of the FTDs like highly correlate to the volumes of the day and all of them were settled in a day or two. I mean, like you can accept my explanation or the alternative is that and very high, like highly volatile trades that are historically unprecedented. Like I guess organizations moved in and illegally naked shorted stuff around this one retail security. Like, yeah, and it's also it's two plus two, not two plus three. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, I think that you need something. I need you. Have, you have to be able to point to something more than like it took an extra day for trades to settle. Therefore, God. there was naked shorting. Like I don't think that's. You don't, you, well, oh my God. Okay. Um... <laughs> Okay, how about uh, how about this? Um, there's extremely few shares to borrow, uh -huh. and yet the borrow fee is tiny, like one percent. As the shorts available to borrow decrease, as the shares available to borrow decrease, the interest on borrowing it has gone unchanged. I don't know about like this one particular number. I know that all of the options related to this security had an incredibly high premium on it. I, I feel like um, I, I, just, I don't know the answer to this one particular question, but I don't see how it's relevant to anything. Normally, in order to short a stock, mm -hmm. you have to borrow it first. Okay. Normally. Now, market makers have an exception where they don't have to do this they can short the stock Here, my bad i'm trying to like play hearthstone while i'm doing this. this is actually very hard all right let me get out of this um yeah so normally normally you have to you have to borrow the stock first and then in order, in order to short it right as a retail investor that's what we would have to do for example uh -huh. um as a market maker you have the exception where you don't have to do that you could uh, short the stock before you own it, before you've even located it, um, before before you've borrowed it. So, wait. That, so my understanding is, if you don't have the ability, if you can't if you can't secure a security, you're not allowed to short it. That's called naked shorting. That, that is illegal. That's not, that's not true. It's it's one there. They can legally do it. The market makers can can legally do so, and they pass on that loophole, that ability to do it. Like these are like obscure fucking like archaic laws that they're wait why what do market why do market makers short stocks market makers just took the other ends on trades and they deal with the massive volume and the order flow from because, brokerages because the, market, the market makers are these massive central banks and they do have hedge fund offshoots and hedge fund partners and when they okay hold on hold on wait just to be very 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 clear here okay an offshoot or another corporation is not a market maker having a mutual owner doesn't make the two companies the same let me finish the sentence the point okay. we get across uh, sure also market makers are not central banks either but go ahead 
the sentence. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the biggest banks are market makers and, and central banks. I don't, I don't know what you mean um, by that, but okay. Um, I forgot where we were. Uh, what was the, the last thing you said? I forgot what I was about to say. Here, let me go full screen. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how like the one number, um, you, you said that like the, the interest to short it is low or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so normally, normally in order to, to short a stock, you have to borrow it first. So as, as more people borrow shares, the more of them that get borrowed, the mm -hmm. less of them that, that there are available to borrow in a, in a fair system. So as the availability of borrowable shares goes down, the interest rate on borrowing them goes up, right? Okay. Um, now, if they're shorting stock, um, which like just based on the 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 uh, volume of of trades on down ticks, we know they are. The question is like, is it naked or not naked, right? Um, if they're borrowing the shares fairly, the interest rate on borrowing it should go up. But there's like zero shares available, and the the cost to borrow is like staying at one percent. Um, they're 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 just taking advantage of very archaic systems and and loopholes, and they're basically passing on their ability to to short sell without needing to locate and borrow first onto hedge funds, onto partners of theirs, because everybody in the chain wins. The exchanges win because the volume of trading goes up. The market makers win because they're lending out shares that they don't own at a premium. The hedge funds win because they get to short sell stock that they don't own or stock that's hard to otherwise borrow. Uh, everybody in the system wins. Nobody in the chain has incentive to, to address it. And the SEC is a captured piece of shit that is incapable, unwilling to, to do anything, <laughs> frankly. So, um, so you're, so all, and, and you've, We've divined all of this because despite all of this rampant corruption and conspiracy, they can't arbitrarily bump the percentage of that loan up a little bit to hide it? We've defined all of this because people that know much more about the markets than you or I uh, have said this happens and is rampant and is a problem. And I'll go ahead and link you all this stuff if you want to look into it. But um, here, I'll, I'll just send you a bunch of links right now if you want to. Go ahead and read through them. I could read some of them on stream right now if you like, um, if we really want to get into it. But um, here, I got them pulled up. Uh, I'll send them in Discord. And I'll send them to everyone in chat too. Okay. I love you, but I don't know what you think. Linking me a 33 page. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, Destiny. This is like, I'm telling you they're taking advantage of a regulatory loophole. And I mean, that's the nature of this the This is also from 2008. Loophole. Yes, it is from 2008. That's the uh, last time this was heavily addressed. And I'm sending you a lot of documents. They're not all from 2008. Here, I'll link him to chat too. So the so basically your idea is that not my idea. Well, the, this is your idea because you're so you're linking me stuff about financial problems that existed 13 years ago, but you're saying this is all still happening also, today, and it's specifically revolving around like the GME stuff now, and that's what. It's not revolving around GME stuff. GME, it just got, it got so out of hand with the GME. Like they, they shorted a company that suddenly became high profile. And um, it well, actually, here's a document I didn't link that describes why it happened specifically with GME. GME is just the reason people notice. This happens market wide. This happens all across the market. Uh, th this last one is a bit of like, uh, this is from the GameStop uh, rocket rider movement, but uh, it is good info. In the first few slides, it describes why specifically with GameStop this became an issue. But um, no, it's not like just only happening with GameStop. This has been an issue. It is an issue. In 2008, they tried to address it after Lehman Brothers went down. The CEO of Lehman Brothers said naked shorting is the like, the reason. Like they they defaulted. The underlying beginning of the issue was the bad like CDOs and everything, but. Naked shorting is what turned 
uh, a bad situation into an, a global economic disaster. Um, and uh, it's documented. So the SEC tried to address it. They passed what's called Reg Show, like the short selling regulation that tried to keep this in check. And that's what made the market makers have to declare their fail to delivers. And it made them need to settle them after 21 days. Um, but even at that time, uh, in one of these documents, it was the head of the, uh, one sec. Um, I want to tell you which guy it was that, uh, whatever, one of the SEC guys, I got to find the document. It's not in the ones I linked you. Um, the, the head of the SEC or, or an employee of the SEC, it was very high up. I forget, like a director or something. He said at the time that, that reg show is getting passed in 2008, he said, this isn't good enough. This doesn't actually solve the issue. It's just like. It, it, and it didn't. Um, it just continues to happen, and it, it's just an industry-wide problem. It, it's really, it's really just them taking advantage of their position as market makers to be able to sell short before they have to borrow and locate. Um, and on paper, there's like the, the failure to deliver is like supposed to be indicative of this, but I mean, based on the, the stuff people are finding now, it, does, it looks like they found a workaround to that as well. Like. There's a way to wash your fail to delivers um, if you happen to have a market maker and a, uh, another entity that they pass their market making loophole onto. They, working together, they can essentially wash their fail to delivers and reset the 21 day settlement schedule over and over again. So it's, it's not like you're gonna see infinite fail to deliver percentages today anymore. Um, they're high and they're higher than they should be, but it's, um, they can reset the the deadline on having to settle those trades uh, fairly easily. And if the company goes under, they never have to, to settle them. So. Yeah, my bad guys, sorry. I didn't mean that turning us into a stock stream. <laughs> Let me get off the Hearthstone uh, category, my bad. So why did they get caught this time if there's so much coordination and corruption going on? Uh, what do you mean get caught this time? They've been caught. Everyone's known this is going on for decades. People have been fighting this battle for decades. It's just that the SEC is like captured. They don't have the, uh, they have neither the willingness nor desire nor ability to, uh, to address it. That's when I say the, get caught, what I mean is like, so Melvin Capital obviously got hosed. So, like, how are any of these hedge funds losing out if they just have the ability to, I guess, function with this level of impunity and corruption? They're, they're not losing out. They're the richest entities in the world, siphoning wealth from pension funds uh, into their pockets, using this loophole and, and others. They haven't been caught. That's the problem. That's my point. I mean, they've been caught, rather, but it hasn't been addressed. The entire fucking system is happening behind closed doors it's non-transparent it's overly complex and all of this just makes it easier especially when you capture the regulatory agency uh to get away with it so what's and like it, one change you think that should happen so that this type of stuff doesn't happen anymore well i mean i <laughs> uh you know i'm for me personally i mean this it's going to sound a little extremist but i think the the only true way to fix it is for the whole system to be transparent and for everybody in the market to operate under the same rules. So none of this rules for me, not for the bullshit. When you market, say like rules for me, not for the, like, what do you mean by that? I mean, market makers can do things like many, many things, but just as one example, they can short sell a stock without having to borrow it first. That's something that a retail investor can't do. So do you, you think that like market makers shouldn't exist? I think that market makers should play by the same rules that we do. And I think that the whole system should be on something like a blockchain. But if, mar so it's if market, if market makers, if market makers had to, had to function exactly as I guess, retail investors or hedge funds, though, they probably wouldn't be able to be market makers. Right. What do you think a market maker is? Is this, am I getting quizzed now? 
So my understanding is a market maker is an entity that would sit between like a brokerage and some depository or another market maker. And what they essentially do is they'll take either end on a trade to ensure that there's liquidity in the market. So when I go into a brokerage, I try to buy or sell a security, that trade always executes instantly because there's a market maker that's willing to take the other side of that trade. But them taking the other side of that trade is gonna be dependent upon essentially what are unsavvy retail investors generally taking both sides of the trade. Market makers execute thousands of orders and huge blocks at a time. And the reason why they make their money is because they tighten the spread and they make their money off the difference between the buys and the sells of retail traders taking either side. Let me find you the uh, the SEC definition. It's actually uh, it's actually quite broad, and it's actually very abstract and ambiguous. And well, the general idea of a market maker is a market maker is there to provide liquidity in a market by taking either end of the trade. I think that's like a broad definition of what a market maker is. Somebody that's willing to take the other side of a trade. Is that, or is that is there a more broad definition of that? But that, my understanding, that's why they they're called a market maker. They make markets. They're willing to to stand on the other end of a trade. Uh, it's a it's an SEC designation for a financial body that allows them to to do trades that other people can't in a way that other people can't. And yeah, the 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 underlying like idea behind it is that it helps with liquidity in the markets, and it's they justify they justify it with all sorts of like very abstract complicated reasons but this is where they're allowed to do things that other people don't because they also get like access to stuff that other people don't so they have to have like a special set of rules and regulations no they don't no, that's just that that's well like that, you wouldn't that. want for instance like a you wouldn't want like a hedge fund doing like payment for order flow or something right I wouldn't want anyone doing that yeah why not because it's fucking front running and the antithesis do you know what the difference is between front running and payment for order flow what do you think front running is, and then what do you think payment for order flow is? Since you quiz me on market makers, I'm going to quiz you on these two I think terms. Front running is getting ahead of a trade that you know is going to happen to skim off the top, and mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so, what was the, the other question? Yeah, and then what is PFOF? Payment for order flow. Payment for order flow is when uh, an entity can pay for trade information about trades uh, that that are submitted by retail investors or others. Okay, that's Thanks. true. So these two things are totally different from one another. I didn't say they're the same. What do you thought? Okay, I'm sorry. You heavily implied that these two things, because payment for order flow is probably a good thing, and uh, okay, front let's, running let's, is literally let's... illegal. Is literally a horribly illegal thing. So I don't know why you would just use this. You're a borderline anymore. unregulated, multi-trillion-dollar entity, and you're paying for the data of retail investors' trades. Mm -hmm. Why are you paying for that data? Why do you want to have it? Why are you willing to spend money for it? Well, why? Why do you think? So that they can use it to make profit. Like How do they other. make profit? <laughs> By taking advantage of the data like any entity so does. So that's illegal. That's not what they do. They, so front running is what you're describing. The way that they make profit is because, so I don't think you know exactly what a market maker does. So I'll explain again. Market makers make money by tightening spreads. When they take positions on either end of a trade, the money that they're making is by being on either end of that trade and then tightening the spread between the bids and the asks, right? Or the bids and the offers. The, the, the reason why they'll do payment for order flow is because the more trades they get, the more they can make money off of that spread. That's why they do payment for order flow. They don't do it to front run. They don't need to front run to make money off of it. They just do it Destiny, by executing like billions of trades. Destiny, the stock market is a very big, complex thing. It's not something that either of us can fully understand in great detail after hours of Googling shit. People go to school for this for long periods of time just to wrap their heads around it. So I'm basically saying there's this high level problem that I think exists. It sounds like you don't think it's happening, but I encourage you to read this stuff because I think it would change your mind. Keep an open mind with it. Um, it it's, you know, like the CEO of Lehman Brothers says is happening. I don't know what happened in, in 2008. I don't know how relevant okay, that well, is to you now. You not right? knowing it doesn't happen doesn't mean that it didn't happen. No, but like, it, might, it might have happened in 2008, but I don't know if it happens today, right? Dodd-Frank was in 2010. I know there was a lot of stuff that Dodd-Frank changed in terms of how- can't, You can't put that level of like burden of, 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 of proof on-, on, on something. Like, If you're the one making these massive claims that all this legal shit is happening, I think a little, a little bit of like ask of like, well, what's happening is, I think that's fair for me to ask. There's a lot of people who get a lot of big claims about the market. Like, like the bar you're setting is you want the CEO of like a major bank to say, hey, yeah, we're illegally doing that today. So here, let's go from this Rolling Stone article. When was well, this? This is May 2012. 
here. Hold on. Let me just read quotes to you. Um, <clears throat> here's from the Merrill Lynch Pro president, Thomas Tranfaglia. Uh, says, we are not borrowing... Ne oh, this is from a 2005 email, to be fair. So this is a while ago. It says, we are not borrowing negatives. I've made that clear from the beginning. Why would we want to borrow them? We want to fail them. So the negative is referring to like a negative rebate stock. That's just a stock that uh, is, is very uh, expensive to borrow generally. Um, and fail is a fail to deliver. So there emails, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and read like long ass articles, but the Rolling Stone link goes into uh, just email evidence of them saying like, yeah, we're doing this. Um, but I, I would I, like... Man, there's a lot of material on this, and it's unfortunately, it's not the kind of thing where I can just be like. Sure, I understand. Oh, okay, sure, I understand. So, okay, I'm not going to let you just keep saying like it's complicated, so I have no explanation. All right. My understanding is that part of what Dodd Frank changed, part of the anti fraud change, was requiring that shorts um, from a lot of different types of investors, so like hedge funds or whatever, have to be secured. You can't, you're not like naked shorting, I think was legal pre Dodd Frank, but that was one of the things that they really? changed. So when you send me something saying, well, look, naked shorting was happening in 2005 or 2008, it's like, yeah, sure. But like that was one of the things that Dodd Frank, my understanding is that was one of the things that Dodd Frank was supposed to change. I'd recommend you read this stuff, man. I, I could I could sit here and just start reading paragraphs, but I just think it would make for a boring stream, you know. I think it's the kind of thing you have to you have to just read the explanations. And like I, I what I don't want to have happen is like th this is such a complicated thing. I don't want to like sit here and try to like paraphrase the th these documents I'm reading from people smarter than me on the issue. And then like Well, but you're probably reading like and then you, you look at that and you're like, oh, well, that one thing is wrong. Therefore, the whole issue doesn't happen. Well, it's like, no, maybe it's just a complicated fucking finance thing that a Hearthstone streamer is not qualified to explain in, in great detail. Sure, you know, but what, 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 also, you're, you're right. You're right, Destiny, in the sense that, like, there's nothing I can point to today where, like, some bank, some banker will publicly say, yes, we are doing this. Um, so the, the, the level of proof is not going to be at that level, right? It's, it, it is merely that they have means, motive, motive. Uh, <laughs> they have the means, motive, and uh, you know, opportunity to do this. They have every incentive to do this. There are macro trends that strongly point towards this. And many economists have written papers and dissertations about the issue, but all of them are these dense 30-page things. Um, and it's, it's not, it's, it's not w like one thing you can point to to say, ha, got you. That's happening clearly because of this one thing. I'm not looking at anything like that. I just think it'd be more interesting if there was like a really good, like wall street journal journal, or even like a Bloomberg op-ed or something on it, rather than like, here's a rolling stone article from like a crazy dude that said that he, you know, bribed Clinton with $20 million and like this, he's got all the facts. Like I, I I'm, ne I'm sorry, but I'm never going to trust like a, this one guy came out and leaked all the information that isn't corroborated by any other person in the industry that no financial expert is writing on. Like, I don't think that that's like the most, to, to try to, to try, wait, 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 just real quick. Wait, come on, wait, 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 come on. I've let you talk for like, I've let you talk for 90% of this, man. Come on. I'm, I'm like a lot of people. That's you misrepresenting what I talked about. It's a blatant fucking lie. You can, I did not you can say, say one that. Guy Listen, okay, now. you get to play 20 questions with me. I answered all of your questions and now you're hiding behind the like, well, it's complicated. I can't explain any of this. Here's a Rolling Stone article. Like, I think it's fair for me to be a little bit critical. This is how you must understand, or maybe you don't, I don't know. This is how every single conspiracy theory ever goes. Here's this one obscure 40 page PDF. And then here's like a two hour, 50,000 view YouTube video that explains the massive conspiracy that no one else is talking you about. You know you, you're losing every time you it's wait just, you you talk like 90 percent of this conversation I'm talking over you because you talk for a long period of time without pausing ever and you're misrepresenting what i'm saying which is why i want to cut you off i'm not linking a fucking rolling stone article because rolling stone is the source i'm linking the rolling Sto stone article because it summarizes fucking litig like documents from a lawsuit now, i can link you the documents from the lawsuit and read through those but i just think it's a lot more dense and i think the rolling stone summary that links to the stuff is just a better source. Right? So it's not like one guy that went out and linked it. And even if it was, that guy would be more credible than you because this is straight out of Goldman. It's Goldman's lawyers that leaked this. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, like, I don't I don't have an account, but it's like incredibly embarrassing to show Goldman et al. engaged in naked short selling. That wasn't illegal pre-2008. 
So I don't know why I would care about this. Okay. Clearly they were doing it before 2008. Mm -hmm. The proof is there that they were. Mm -hmm. The only thing that changed when it comes to naked short selling, the only thing the SEC did to try to clamp down on it is pass reg show. For many reasons, it was not nearly enough. It was clearly designed to make it look like they were doing something. There are a million ways to get around it. And if you honestly think that they're not still doing something that they were doing that's profitable for them and there are legal root loopholes to get around and still continue to do this, it, 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 I don't know. Like, I, it, I really think the, the burden of, of proof shifts closer to the they're not doing it side of the, the argument. You know? Yeah, but you understand you have an auto win for every single argument, right? As soon as you buy into the like the whole industry is corrupt, like, well, why doesn't FINRA say it? Because they're corrupt. Why doesn't the SEC say it? They're corrupt. Like, so no other hedge fund? They're all collab- corrob- uh, collaborating. Like, oh, okay. So like you have like, you've got an auto win for every single argument, right? Right. Dustin, what has the SEC ever done to, to, to can you point to a, like a single fucking Sure, they the SEC regulate. literally fined Robinhood, the people we're exa- exactly talking about, for a payment for order flow error that they did a few years ago. This is literally directly relevant. The SEC fined them, like, I think around $20 million, $30 million. The SEC fines people all the time. Or what, like, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, when they dole out small fines. First of all, Robinhood is not the one doing the short selling. Um, no, but they were engaged in payment for order flow. They were improperly routing some of those, arguably, which is why the SEC fined them. The SEC will never, in its current form, get in the way of this. They've had the opportunity to, and they're not willing to, or not able to, I don't know. I think not willing. I I Uh, agree with you when you say like the system is complicated and a lot of people don't understand that. But I think the problem is, is that part of that complication is like, it's hard to point out like, well, what needs to change? Or like, what's wrong? It's like earlier, like- It's not transparent. It's the same thing that's always wrong. What's not trans, what part's not transparent? Because the entire system operates through multiple layers of complexity that the retail investor can't understand, all behind closed doors with different entities have different rules applying to them. It's fucked. Like, I mean, like we can you know, read, like I mean, we can read like a and a hedge funds like 13F to find their filings. Like we know that we can read like Finra. All of that stuff is public. The rules and regulations surrounding like market makers and everything. We can look at profit loss published by brokerages. Like what part do you, what part needs to be more transparent? What part isn't you know like short interest ratios reported by all the major stock yeah. exchanges? Like how about, how about X clearing? How about dark pools? How about like literally fucking. Anything that doesn't go through the, the system that we do when we trade. Can you t- talk to me about X clearing and dark pools? How about foreign exchanges? How about like Forex markets I'm- report? Well, talk to me about some of these. What are, what are dark pools? What, are, what is an X uh, trade or whatever? That- dark pool is like a slang term for over-the-counter trading. It's mm-hmm. basically when, you know, two entities, I think you need a special designation. I think it might be only market makers that can do this, but it's when they trade outside of the exchanges with one another. It's a way to to do larger trade trades without completely uh, spiking the price or dropping the price on the main market um, for higher volume trades. That's like the the premise behind it. But, uh, you know, in practice, what it is is just trading behind closed doors that opens up series of other loopholes, but I like, I not only do not, I not understand off the top of my head, all of these loopholes that I can go into it because this is like a, it, it's like a four stage, five stage process. It's not like at a minimum, I, I can't. I guess like, I, I don't understand, I don't expect you to have like a, here's how to reform the entire financial system. I think that would be an unfair burden to place on anybody. That's, I, I wouldn't expect you to do that, I guess. But I'm a little bit disappointed when people are saying that like everything is corrupt and messed up and destroyed. And I was like, okay, well like, what's like one or two things that you think should change? And then it's like, well, everything's so complicated. I can't even think of a single thing that I would change. No, that's not what I said. I said exactly what should change. And said the same rules should apply to everybody in the yeah, system. That's, transparent. Okay, it should be you understand applied. that when you say that, that's absolutely fucking insane. What do you mean the same rules should apply for everybody? Different people have different levels of liquidity. Different people play different stages in the market. Different people have different obligations and responsibilities. Like, what, what do you mean everybody should play by the same rules? Should like should normal retail market, capitalism should be? I think it should be a free fucking market. That's, yeah, that's not what I think. I think large entities shouldn't be allowed to sell IOUs uh, through a fucking. 12 step complex process. It's not, that's what I think should change. I think naked shorting should be 
not possible. I don't think there should be a fuck. I think we should be on instant settlement. There's a start. I don't think it should be a fucking T plus three or... It's T plus two. Plus instant settlement is a good... Yeah, a lot of people have been pushing towards that. I think that would be a really positive thing. I think most people agree that like at the very least T plus one, if not, yeah, instant settlement. I don't know how... I don't know if there's like actual physical Take boundaries that keep companies Kafka's. from doing that, but... Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good start for sure. I don't know if T plus one or, or T plus zero or like zero day settles. I don't know if that changes much of this, but maybe some of the collateral requirements it would. It changes a lot, I think. But yeah, I don't know. Like the, the problem is like, even if you get ahead of this one problem, you know, it's just, it's still the way the system's set up right now, it's just going to lead to others. It's just, it, it needs to be more simplified, more transparent across the board. Uh, that's how I feel about it. But I honestly, man, like I, I, I really hope you read some of this stuff uh, and keep an open mind about about it because it's. <clears throat> I, I think it's a bit of a where there's smoke, there's fire situation, and I, I think that the, the the claim that naked shorting is happening and rampant is not only substantiated by many economists that have actively researched it, but like. There's no, like, I don't, I, I just don't know why it's a contentious issue. It fucks all of us. And even if it's not happening, it, the way the system's set up, it could be. Because and the problem is that the way that it, the way that it fucks people is way sometimes that they don't want to hear like that. And that's the problem is there's probably some changes that need to happen that the average person doesn't want to hear. So for instance, like, I don't know if a retailer, like a normal retail trader should ever be allowed to just trade on margin. Like that's something that probably shouldn't exist. I don't think retail traders should be allowed to trade stocks without paying a fee per trade. It's one of the things that payment for order flow eliminated was the ability for, for people to just you trade frictionless. Not. These are probably bad things. Do some people research how to spend dude. their money, but and not just well, yeah, you might say that, but like, like for a lot of these regulations, like that's probably the type of stuff that, that should happen. Like there should be more friction in the markets for buying and selling securities. But if you were to suggest really? something like that, then people would come out and say like, oh, you're trying to hurt the little guy. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Like people would be opposed to that type of change, even though overall that would be way healthier for the markets and every single player involved. I don't know. I, I think I think this is just overcomplicating a very, very simple issue. I think just like... <laughs> Wait, you just said earlier that it was incredibly complicated. Now it's super simple? Or the oh yeah sorry I, I meant my uh what, what's really super simple to me is that everybody should play by the same rules that that part of it is super simple okay i think and that just I comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of like how different people in the, in the markets operate but I, yeah i don't know okay maybe they wouldn't operate differently if they all could play by the same rules you then, know? yeah then we would just we would have no market makers we would arguably have no brokerages we i guess we would all just go to what new york and stand in the middle of the markets worked pretty well for a long time without a lot of that bullshit yeah in fact they imploded a lot less often markets worked very well um okay i don't even want to go to that one all right um i don't know what there have been a pretty there have been some exceptional crashes in, in in the history of markets to say that markets have worked pretty well also a lot of the, like today we have unprecedented access to markets by like average citizens too like we've had like a level of access to markets that have never been dreamed of before you can download a little fucking gambling app on your phone and start buying and selling shit like the whole thing should be on blockchain. I think if more people looked into it, even though it's a dense, boring topic, I think more people would be outraged at what's going on. It's uh, it's scary, and it's happening. And I don't know. I, I it's, it's not even a political opinion or anything. I, it, it's the, the notion that that all big banks play entirely by the rules and the whole system is fair is, is fucking absurd to me. But it, it's. It's not just a conspiracy theory. It's a well-researched topic by many economists, but it's, it's, it's you need to read into it to understand the, the smoking guns behind it. Cause it's, it's, it's like macros that they're looking at like statistics over a, a broad range. And none of it is like, oh, for sure, that's naked shorting, right? I'll give you like one example, for example, uh, fail to delivers. We both know what fail to delivers are. Right now, wait, if, what do you think of failure deliveries? I'm curious. I think we, or I can describe it. You can tell me if you agree with my description of it. Sure. My understanding is that there is a T plus two settlement window for any trade and a failure to deliver is counted as the percentages of trades that did not clear 
in the time that they were supposed to. And then these are marked cumulatively. So if the FTD is 10% one day and 2% the next day, that means that from the prior day, 80% um, of the trades ended up clearing that hadn't before. So it keeps track of it cumulatively. That's like a failure to deliver. Correct, yeah. In practice, it's actually a lot longer than T plus two because only at T plus five, the, the broker has to start locating it. And then at, at T plus six, it finally gets considered an FTD. But yeah, basically it, you described it like very accurately. Yep, um, that's exactly how it works. So. In theory, right, if if like failure to deliver has just happened from like random events, right? Somebody couldn't find the paper stock in their drawer, or the dog ate it, or there, there's some issue, some small bank with being able to move it. Um, they should be randomly dispersed throughout markets or at least like concentrated in areas that are like more likely to fail, right? Um, but when people have looked just at a macro level at failure to deliver rates, um, it's, it's clearly not random. They found the exact opposite. The failure to delivers are uh, happening um, in very concentrated moments that, that are just indicative that it's being done strategically, not at random. It's not spread evenly like fucking peanut butter on bread. Like there's massive spikes where it's strategically advantageous uh, to fail. Um, and okay, I guess I, 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 you know what, that's maybe my lack of education. I'd have to go through and look at, I guess, other reporting on FTDs. But when I looked at the FTDs related to the GameStop stuff, they all seem to be incredibly highly correlated with like ultra high activity, uh, which makes the most sense to me. The ch times when you're going to have the hardest to locate securities are going to be when there's more activity of shit flying back and forth. But maybe in other parts of the market, maybe it doesn't work that way or maybe other stuff is going on. It's... It who would have incentive to look into it? You know, you have to... Well, FINRA and S the SEC, I imagine, would, right? Also, other traders would as well. Other hedge funds or other uh, market makers or other institutions that are involved in the market probably wouldn't well, want some they, people they, engaging they, they in it. They have looked into it. SEC has looked into it, and they also say it's happening. So it's, you know, or at least uh, in 2008, they said it was happening. In 2009, they said it was 2008, happening. 2008, it was legal, so that's okay. And, and it, was, it was never legal to not locate a stock that you short sold that was never legal the, my understanding is that naked shorting was absolutely legal that wasn't that wasn't explicitly made illegal until dodd frank uh it's naked shorting's always been illegal it was legal back then it's legal now that's why they're getting in lawsuits with the uh the overstock guy crazy or not he was suing them over this quite a long time ago um but I, okay yeah. so just to be clear they they were made illegal in 2008 2009 i'm saying this gently but they were made illegal in 2008 2009 that, that that's part of Dodd Frank, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I, do you have like the what what part of it like? It just explicitly says you can now short sell stock that you don't um, locate. It. I think it's this the naked short selling anti fraud rule. This is by the SEC in two thousand eight November. Um, I'm pretty sure if you naked shorting illegal. Google. Um, As the Investopedia article says it. Here you go in paragraph two. Despite being made illegal after the 2008 2009 financial crisis. This didn't make it illegal, what you linked. It just says that they, this rule will further evidence the liability of short sellers, including broker dealers acting for their own accounts. Um, yeah, so it made it like more clear. I think this is the. Uh, this is what made them report the fails, I think. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is reg show, is what you linked me. Yeah, it's it's regulation show. Yeah, so this is what made them have to report the fail to delivers, which is why we can now Google it and see them. But uh, it didn't make it illegal or anything. It's always been illegal before and after that. This just made it easier for the SEC to like track it, and it forced them like if the fail if the fail lives too long, it forces them to settle it. That's what that act did. But it's always been illegal. You can't short sell stock you don't own and have no intention of ever locating. It's not. Um, Gotcha. My understanding is that like prior to this, you could basically do it, but you, that you basically had to prove that somebody was like being intentionally fraudulent with their naked shorting. You had to prove that they were like engaged in some malicious activity. But post this, the liability increases on the seller such that you're going to be held more accountable and, and you could face prosecution or you could face fines um, in the, the bar for proving that wasn't as high. But, but I don't know 100% of the details. I have to go into it more more concretely than that. But that was my understanding of it. No, um, I, I know when I talked about right, here, here's another, uh, here's a video. This is maybe a little more digestible. It's 21 minutes long, but, uh, th this, this is an, one sec. Thank you very much.
This is an economist that uh, looked into it. Um, that uh, I, I want to say this is the guy that looked at macro data and just like see is this strategic or um, yeah yeah he was looking at it around ETFs and things like that but um, also like when I brought this up on stream the uh, uh, a lot of folks in your community were like shit talking uh, Patrick Byrne guy. Um, and like, I don't look, I don't know anything about this guy. Apparently he's like a Trumper or some shit. Uh, and, and recently has said some insane shit, but uh, I don't think that invalidates um, his argument, which I do think is really well reasoned, but I'll link a video of his, which I think is like the most digestible way to, to see the problem. Um, and the, the mechanics, like the tactics behind it have changed as regulation has slightly changed, but it's functionally the same thing still going on. Um, but yeah, look into this stuff and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing my research. I'll try to like formulate my, cause you asked like really good questions and the fact that I can't like concisely describe why this is clearly happening is like, uh, it's something I should work on. Because all the materials I've read where people try to explain it are also very long. It's always fucking 40-minute videos, 30-page documents. Nobody's explaining it concisely, but it can probably be done. Um, so I'm going to look into that. And maybe and if you have any any other like info based on research you've done, I'd be happy to read that too. Because this is like, I don't know, I'm really interested in this right now. I think the margin calls are starting. That's why Archigos went on. Like, yeah, I mean, I talked about this shit on Saturday after Goldman Sachs liquidated like 30 billion uh, on Friday. And now it's like, uh, was it Credit Suisse or um, an Archegos went under on Monday. Now it's hitting the Japanese banks today. It's, I, don't, I, I think it might be starting the fucking- Why did you say, wait, Archegos, what about them getting liquidated or what, say that again? Yeah, I, basically, I talked about this issue on Saturday, and I said the reason it scares me is because I think it'll this could instigate like the next financial collapse. Um, it's it's created this massive house of cards of fucking failed shares throughout the system, mm -hmm. um, and then I I felt like, and now there's a chain of margin calls happening to the order of tens of billions of dollars, which uh, are happening right now. It's it's if we were living in in '08 again, it's kind of the the. the a very similar scenario where these massive there's like this economic world war three going on and, and all we, we see it through these headlines that are so buried among other headlines it, it's it's the kind of thing where I, th I think the, the world won't really know what happened until you know months after the fact um like these these crises often are so that, that basically that's the reason i'm so passionate about it right now because i think it's happening right now i think it's, um, it's it's egregious right now i don't know um Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll take a look into some of these links and I'll expand my own knowledge. So, yeah, I, I need to do it too because I, I I I should be able to more concisely answer um, the stuff you're asking, and it bothers me that I can't. Um, All right. Well, but yeah, man. Good luck I'm gonna with the um, Hearthstone stuff. Are you back in Legend yet? I haven't looked at your stream. Oh uh, no, I've been playing for a couple of days. Um, yeah, they changed the system. It takes fucking forever now. Yeah, maybe in a day or two. We'll see. They just reset it this morning too. I think. But. But yeah, man, have a good have a good stream. We should talk about this more. Like more people should should know. Honestly, I think we should we should use our play if you agree with me after you're reading through it. Because um, yeah. I'm not again, I'm, I'm not saying like GME is this big conspiracy thing or whatever. Ray the fuck. I'm right saying there's like says everyone a systemic be problem. To play one the I'm same pretty level. sure it's still happening. You should look so into this, and we got to do something about it because it's gonna fuck the whole global economy if we don't. Gotcha. Um, All right. Okay. okay, well, have fun, be careful, good. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. What is happening?